afternoon, folks. Big Bo with RVs with Big Bo at Parkway RV Center. And guys, I feel like doing a Class C today. We got one in that uh, I know a lot of people are looking for, and that's a nice, small, uh, no-slide Class C with low miles. And guys, this one's not only is it smaller, low miles, but it's actually pretty affordable for what it is. And uh, this is, hadn't even got a price on it yet, but this is a 2014 Coachman Freelander model 21 qb is the smallest one they built that year and is built on a chevrolet 4500 chassis so uh and it's got six liter vortec v8 324 horsepower 373 pound feet of torque that we're going to drive later in the video so and get this guys 24,000 miles under 25,000 miles that's it really nice rv for what it is you know, and, and you know, I'm in that point in my life too, guys. I've got a 25 foot uh, Dynamax myself with no slide. This one's 23 feet, 11 inches long. And um, it's just so nice being able to just pull up at a campsite and not have to mess with slide outs and jacks and everything else. And you know, if your campsite's level, all you pretty much gotta do is pull up, plug in. And uh, you know, if you're gonna stay more than a night or two, hook your water and sewer up and you're there. I mean, there's literally nothing else to do besides pull your awning out. And, um, you know, I've literally set mine up and sitting and be sitting under the awning in my chair and watching my neighbor that pulled up at the same time spend another 30, 40 minutes setting up a big fifth wheel or a big class A motorhome, still setting up and I'd been set up for over half an hour and I could break camp just as fast. And, and there's something is very, very nice about that, about having a small motor home that's just so easy to use. And uh, and I know it, hey, different strokes for different folks, you know, and yes, mine, just like this one may not have all the amenities, may not have a ton of room, but it's all you need for a couple people and, uh, or three people in my case. And, um, this is a nice one, guys. Got the HD Max paint, 24,000 miles. Got a trailer hitch on the back. Should be rated for 5,000 pounds. I apologize, I forgot to look that up. 4KW generator, 400 hours on it. Running right now, powering everything inside. Dash air is cold, no check engine lights. Tires look good. Got the smaller engine because it's a smaller motor home. You don't have to have a V10 and a in a 20 in an under 24 foot foot motor home i mean you can if you want to but this is still plenty of power it's a 50th anniversary edition coachman's been around a long time guys it's got a manual awning so really easy to put up and down and nothing you know one thing you say about a manual awning they very rarely break <laughs> i mean you just got to know what you're doing, putting them up and down. But other than that, they very rarely, rarely, if you if you treat them right and put them up when it gets real windy, you very rarely have any issues with them. I uh, do have a nice little outside entertainment center with a stereo and a TV. Um, does have the mega storage compartment in the back. And you can see guys, more than enough storage to meet your needs. I mean, guys, if, you, if you need more storage than this for your outside exterior storage and you need to, you're carrying, you need to step back and reevaluate what you take with you because you're carrying way too much stuff. If you can't fit it all in half of this space. I mean, you know, all you need is chairs, carpet, grill, a few games maybe, but, and you can fit all that in here and then some big huge storage awning looks good just a little bit dirty but sets up easily and um outside looks good only thing i see wrong with it somebody's added some kind of keyless entry system and the top sticker's been removed but this thing i don't think works anyway because it doesn't light up or anything like that so that's something somebody's added so obviously i can't guarantee it it's not factory but um, but I left it on there because I didn't want holes in it. 
Uh, but anyway, hang tight real quick, guys. I'll just pop a drone up, look at the roof. Roof looks great for a 14 model. And guys, again, it's only $39.99 for this motorhome. Cheapest. Uh, let me put it to you this way, guys. Get on RV Trader and older Freelander 21 QBs, 12s and 13s with more miles that are just the plain white ones are more than this 14 model 50th anniversary or a higher price and this one again has got under 25,000 miles and on a chevrolet six liter v8 vortex and a 4500 ton and a half chassis hang tight let's pop a drone up take a look at that roof You can see guys, roof looks great. Now let's look inside this 21 QB. And um, again, guys, you know, everybody's got their own preferences about slide outs. I mean, I've owned them both ways and there's pros and cons, you know, with slide outs, without slide outs. Um, you know, one thing that I guess you would consider a benefit of not having, or a couple of things you'd consider a benefit of not having a slide out, especially in this day and age of crowded campgrounds, is that it's a lot easier to get a 21 foot or a 24 foot camper or motorhome with no slide out, get it into a spot compared to, say, a 40 foot fifth wheel with four or five slide outs. A lot more available size. Oh, by the way, guys, you do have a. Uh, <laughs> queen size full size to queen size bed it's a little bigger than a full a little smaller than a queen use queen size sheets in the cab over uh, i do have a tv on a swivel mount so you can adjust it see it from any angle um the cab over looks good got a little dvd player up there crank up antenna i've just got the tv on antenna it looks a little jumpy on the screen i had just a refresh rate uh on this samsung tv i guess is a little different than this uh uh hd camera i guess but in person it doesn't jump it's just the way it looks on camera and um you know a couple points about not having a slide and of course a slide out does give you a lot more room when you're set up but um they do take a lot of room when they're in and you have to adjust everything when you're traveling you know good thing about it what you see here is what it is when you're traveling when you're driving down the road or when you're set up at the campsite nothing changes and the fact you can get into a smaller site which you know i have been to many campgrounds that um a smaller unit you can get into uh with a smaller unit without a slide that you couldn't get a site with a bigger unit with with a slide so and honestly this is an easy size to drive and park i mean this isn't I mean, you go buy a brand new Ford pickup truck or a Chevy or a Ram pickup truck like a... Oh, radio's left on there. I don't want any copyright strike. Um, 24,794 miles to be exact. And guys, you can see no ABS lights, no check, check engine lights. Dash here is cold. Um, does have the, the uh, Chevrolet transmission. No carpet in the front. It's got the rubber mat, so easy to keep clean. Jensen stereo system, tilt cruise. Like I said, nothing fancy. I mean, it gets the job done. They drive good. I actually prefer the GM or Chevy chassis on a smaller Class C than I do the Ford. Even though I'm, I'm actually a Ford man when it comes to motorhomes, but I, my current motorhome is a Ford. But in the smaller ones, I do prefer the ride and drive of a Chevrolet chassis. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with a Ford. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to judge the motorhome by the condition of it and how it's well kept before I look at the, the motor, whether it's a Ford or a Chevrolet. That's got nothing to do with it. I mean, they're all so close these day and age, it really doesn't matter that much. But um, I'm going to look at the overall condition before I look at the drivetrain. But um, but this is a Chevrolet chassis, so I do prefer it. If I have a choice between a Ford and a Chevrolet in this size motorhome, I'm going to choose a Chevrolet is what I'm getting at. But I would take a Ford if the motorhome's still nice. 
and um you do have a larger booth that makes a bed so you've got queen bed in the back this makes a double bed here you've got a full-size bed up top so you can sleep five to six people in here you've got a little 13,500 btu roof air refrigerator is should be a six cubic foot rv refrigerator freezer so it can run off a of propane or electric and of course you've got your generator 440 hours on it i think i saw a lot of t hours left on that three burner cooktop oven microwave single basin sink got a countertop extender um of course the tv cuts off when i turn the motor on because it's a safety switch so that the driver doesn't look up and get distracted going down the road which in that piece that i can't move right now because the tv's in the way but that little cutaway piece does come out of the way opens up and uh uh so you can get it out of your cab a little easier you do have a queen size bed in the back does have a little tv dvd combo right here and you do have quite a bit of storage back here as well as storage underneath the bed that goes to your mega storage and you do have one step up right here but that's the price of the mega storage on the outside now the bathroom is uh i mean you got to consider you're only in a 23 foot 11 inch motor i'm again what i was saying guys if you look if you can drive a full-size pickup four-door pickup truck this is only about two or three feet longer so uh overall length of course quite a bit wider but you're eight foot wide but uh Considering the small motor home you're in, this is actually a pretty generous sized bathroom. The previous owners added a door catch right here to hold this door open. But the only thing I don't like about it, it, it doesn't allow you to open your door all the way up against the mattress. So if you're a big guy like me, or a big girl, it's a little tight squeeze coming into here that it wouldn't be quite as tight if you didn't have that door catch. So uh, I'll show it to you the best I can uh but you can still get in here i can kind of squeeze in here if it was me i'd take that door catch off but you know if you're average sized or skinny or skinnier you're not going to have a problem but again guys i'm i'm 300 pounds so keep in mind i got a good on me um but yeah i'm in here now you just got to hit it the right angle <laughs> I've actually lost a little weight. I'm glad I did because I think I could fit in there if I hadn't. <laughs> but uh, you do have a door here. I'm going to leave that shut for the test drive anyway. Medicine cabinet, toilet. Like I said, it's a smaller bathroom for somebody my size, but again, con comparing it to like a Class B bathroom, it's a lot bigger. And, you know, when you've got to take in consideration, hey, I'm in a 20, under 24 foot motor home. So when you take all that consideration, it's actually a pretty decent sized bathroom with a very tight door for somebody my size. Yeah, fat man squeeze. Closet does have a ducted furnace no carpet at all it's all laminate floor rubber mat in the front so that's nice and like i said guys just a basic easy motor home to use uh somebody just this is your first motor home you just want to get your feet wet you don't want to uh get nothing real complicated this is a great choice or for somebody like me who's had the big motor homes with all the complicated systems who's had the big fifth wheels with all the complicated systems you know you know and, and i've said this before guys the longer you rv <coughs> i've been in rv i've been rv for over 25 years your needs will change the longer you stay in rv like you'll start out and love a certain type of rv but you know it's just like you know people change as they get older well your needs change in rv the longer you stay in rv you know now i'm more into the simple smaller hook up and go unhook and go style of camping and that's why this appeal this style of motorhome appeals to me because after doing my share of spending 30 45 minutes an hour making and breaking camp 
every time I go to a campground and some of my other rigs, it's nice having something like this that in five or six minutes I can pull in, be set up and done and camping and, and just in just the same amount of time break camp and leave and not be worn out where I can't enjoy the campground, enjoy the camping experience. Um, and yes, I do sacrifice the room not having a slide out, being in a smaller motor home and not be able to carry as much stuff. But, you know, me and my wife and my daughter, we like the fact that we always carry what we need. Um, it really eliminates waste. You know, when I sold my last Class A, a 38 foot Winnebago Adventurer, it was amazing to me how much junk I had in that thing and I had that unit for almost 10 years and it, the stuff that I had in there that I put in when I first bought it that sat in there for almost 10 years that I maybe used one time some of it I don't think I ever even used and I and then and, and we were cleaning out we kept saying that why in the world did we have an RV that big and had all that stuff that we probably thought we needed the room at the time. Well, we didn't. And uh, we went back to something like this. You know, my very, very, well, one of my very first motorhomes was a 22 foot Coachman, uh, what they call party model, which was a, a sofa table across from that, cab over bed, and a rear kitchen. Like a, about, about this size motorhome, Class C. I had more fun in that thing, and, and that, that's kind of funny. 20-something years later, I went back to that. It's funny how everything goes full circle, don't it? And uh, But, hey, you know what? Five years from now, I might be back in a big diesel pusher or a big Class A or a fifth wheel. Our needs change, guys, and this is, this is true with everything in life. but um you know this is great for a couple this is great for a very small family uh a single person to me i would rather have this in a class b van because it's not much longer um it's going to get um twice or triple the interior space you can actually stand up in it if you're tall you can actually uh, you got bigger bathroom a stationary nice stationary bed nice kitchen area you know two people can actually pass each other in the hallway um man a whole lot less on price too i mean if this was like a 2014 road trek or a pleasure way or a coach house or something like that it'd be fifty sixty thousand dollars but because it's a class c you can get it for under 40 and it's got lower miles it's got twenty four thousand miles on twenty four thousand eight hundred miles on it so but you know this is the type of rv you're looking for we got it but it's not going to last long at this price. $39.9 if you're interested in it, call right away at 706-965-7929. We do have financing available with approved credit and down payment. The price is haggle-free firm, includes our major systems check, which uh, means that we're going to make sure that your major things work that can ruin your camping trip. We're going to check your water system. Make sure there's no plumbing leaks. Make sure your water heater works, water pump works, sink, faucets, toilet, spigots, all that good stuff. Uh, we're going to make sure that generator runs, puts out correctly, which obviously it does. You hear it running now. We're going to make sure your roof air is ice cold. We're going to make sure that, uh, I don't even think this thing has steps. It's got that low-lying step well, so you don't need a step. We're going to make sure drivability is good, which we'll do that here in a minute. Of course, we've already drove it several hundred miles. Um, And we make sure the RV refrigerator freezer gets to operating temp. Now, of course, guys, keep in mind everything else is sold as is. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So please listen closely to that statement. We do not guarantee everything on this thing to work. We guarantee the major systems to work. Mickey Mouse stuff, like if a light doesn't work or a cabinet doesn't work, which so far all that stuff that I've touched so far works. And now we don't guarantee awnings, but I went ahead and pulled the awning out anyway, and it works fine. And obviously, if it works now, it's probably going to work when you buy it. I mean, if, if it's not broken, you really can't fix it, right? Um, besides just a little dirty, the canvas is, it's, it's fine. Um, but, again, guys, the only thing we guarantee at time of sale are the major systems. Again, just to refresh your memory, refrigerator, freezer, 
roof air, generator, plumbing systems, which is water pump, water heater. We check for plumbing leaks and we fix any of that. St if we find any, we fix them, of course. Uh, water pump and make sure all your faucets, spigots, toilet, all that stuff works. Get hot water to the faucets and shower and all that stuff. So everything else, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That's why you need to do one of two things. And really, guys, this, I should have to tell you this stuff because really this should be common sense to anybody buying an RV, used or new, whether it's here uh, from an individual or any other dealer in the country. This should be common sense for everybody buying an RV. You should be doing the, what I'm about to tell you. You should either come look at the RV, inspect it for yourself, test drive it for yourself. Remember, guys, here at Parkway, we only do test drives Monday through Friday, Saturday. I don't have the manpower for Saturday test drives, and we are closed Sundays, of course. That's the Lord's Day and Family Day for our employees, so we don't, and we are closed most holidays, uh, which I don't think we have any major holidays coming up until um, Thanksgiving, but I don't think. I may be off on that, but, um, well, Halloween, but that's not really a, a major holiday business is closed for at least not in this industry but um so you need to come monday through friday if you want to test drive it but this is what i recommend you doing before you buy any used rv guys you need to come look at this thing for yourself inspect it for yourself and uh, you know the major systems that we can guarantee to work it'll be in the video description exactly what we guarantee to work we'll have you sign paperwork that details exactly what we guarantee to work for the price that we charge this is how we keep our prices down so low this is how we keep this is how we make do with what limited help that we have that we're able to hire as far as rv techs by keeping our check out to just the major systems and we make our prices lower to compensate for that i mean when you go online to rv trader in in pretty much any rv for sale website on the internet you're not going to find another 14 with under 25,000 miles for this price and um and you'll see that really quick in fact you you'll be hard pressed to find an 11 or 12 or 13 model for this price but um and plus all of that guys but i have no fees and no upsells besides applicable sales tax you know other dealers you go to they're going to add several thousand dollars in fees and upsells and all that crap that that we don't charge you know you just don't go into a dealership for the advertised price and give them a check for that advertised price and leave with a motor home even if you did figure up your sales tax they're going to add fees dock fees prep fees processing fees tag and title fees and all that junk plus you've got the upsells and all that stuff that's not worth the paper they're written on marked up four or five times four or five times dealer cost that they try to push on you and now the latest thing is with a lot of these corporate dealers is if you come in with cash money or you come in with a you know getting a loan from your own bank or credit union they're going to charge you a fee for for, for paying with your own money because they miss out on finance uh profit on financing opportunities because they mark interest rates up on financing so you know uh, i just had a i've had several people tell me that rip off world up the road charges a couple of thousand dollars if you pay cash or uh get a loan from your own bank versus going through their finance department because they mark interest rates up that's lost profit you know used to you know you come into a dealership well i guess in the car business not so much the rv business but car business you know used to they you know used to be cash customers where what everybody wanted well it's the opposite now dealers lose money on cash customers because they lose money on making potential profit because they get you approved at a certain rate they've got a deal worked out with the lenders that they go through they can they allows them to mark the interest rate up they get to keep the majority of that profit from the marked up interest rate and when you come in obviously if you come in with your own financing or if you pay cash they lose that extra profit they make on financing so they're not going to discount the price they're going to raise the price to make up for that and that's why they charge that extra fee here guys we don't we don't make money on financing so we don't care if you finance it if you when i we, we ask just for your own safety not to carry large amounts of currency especially across state lines it's just a dangerous practice to have and this buzz is 2022 nobody's got to pay hundred dollar bills for anything anymore uh we do prefer that you uh i mean we're not going to turn down cash if you just insist on bringing it but we do prefer that you bring cashier's check or wire transfer um instead of cash but again guys if you do bring cash money we will take it but keep in mind we do have to file a form 8300 with internal revenue service 
with your information and social security number if it's over ten thousand dollars it's the federal law in fact anytime you pay any pay over ten thousand dollars in a single transaction cash whether it's a business or for, or for sale by owner that that person you gave that money to has to do that form or you're talking six figure fines for both of you if they don't and something illegal is going on and and you get caught in possible jail time and that's not state that's federal crime that's felony <laughs> that's uh that's why that's why i always say guys 2022 there's no reason for anybody to have to pay dead presidents for a vehicle in 2022 i mean i understand not wanting a lien and that's perfectly fine you've got cashier's checks you've got wire transfers i mean if you're going to do business with the big you know selling vehicles in 2022 you've got to have abilities to, to accept those kind of payments and um and of course cashier's checks of course we have to be able to verify them with the issuing bank before we can accept them just because of you know the amount of fake cashier checks out there and we've got ways of doing that too so um but that's our preferred method of payment or you know proceeds from a loan we're more than happy to work with your bank or credit union or you can go through one of our lenders again we do not mark interest rates up so whichever works out the best for you i always recommend to my viewers and our customers and really anybody wanting to buy an rv and needing to finance it to always check with your personal bank or credit union that you finance with to see what kind of loans they offer for used RVs and get an idea of the rate and terms and collateral requirements, which means what your model's RV does they finance, what the rates and terms that they charge for those year models. So you always have a basis of comparison. Never just put all your cards, never put all your eggs in one basket, guys always have options you don't depend on the dealership's finance department to be your only option to finance an rv do your research do your homework and have multiple finance options so if you don't like what the dealer says or the dealer can't get you approved you've already got a backup plan in your back pocket that you can fall back on and still buy the rv or if the dealership or you might find a better deal uh, on financing on your own versus the dealership because they mark the rates up so you know more than likely you're going to get a better rate on your own than going through the dealership and since the rv craze has gotten so popular many banks and credit unions now have pretty aggressive rv finance programs not all of them but many of them do uh, my own personal credit union that i've used for 20 something years has got a finance program that they don't go through dealerships that you have to they're only for members of that credit union and the members have to go to the credit union but it beats anything we can get here if you're a member of that credit union it's just a small local credit union here in the uh, tennessee valley area so um and pretty much everybody that's a member there uses that credit union for financing for cars motorcycles houses and uh, rvs because of that but dealerships can't go through them directly. A lot of credit unions and banks do not do lending through dealers. The members have to contact the credit unions directly. So don't be afraid to explore your options. And remember guys, we charge no fees. You know, if a dealership tries to charge you a bunch of fees, remember every dollar extra you give a dealership in fees, like dock fees, prep fees, processing fees, happy camper fees, and, and all that stuff you're just giving that money away to them that's just paying that's just adding money to the price because it's all 100 percent dealer profit the only thing we charge is because we have to is applicable sales tax if you are a georgia resident because we're a georgia dealer we do have to charge a 50 to 100 dollar highway impact fee and a 40 to 50 dollar tag and title fee but if you're a georgia resident you already know this because that's the way what you've had to pay for vehicles for years whether it's individual or from a dealer. Uh, out of state, of course, residents don't pay that. And guys, um, you know, remember guys, all these upsells are nothing but dealer profit. It's just it's selling you services that are worthless and it's marked up four or five times dealer cost. If they add it to your loan, they start trying to sell you on payment. When a dealership starts trying to sell you on payment instead of how much money you're financing, best thing you can do is just get up and walk out never ever shop by payment 
I know that's totally against what most of you were raised up to believe and dealerships bank on that because when a dealership got, gets you shopping by payment, instead of worrying about how much money you're financing, how long you're financing it for, they know they got you bent over a barrel. Excuse, pardon my French. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I mean, I can't think of no better way to put it. And that's how you, that, and that's how, that's why there's so many people on the road today in RVs that they owe 10, 15, 20 grand more than the retail value of that RV. And they owe, I mean, there's nothing they, they can't sell it, they can't trade it, they can't do anything with it except pay on it and use it. If they're tired of it or they want something different, tough luck. You, you overpaid for it, you owe too much on it. I mean, you can either ruin your credit, let it go back, and still have to pay money to, to get out of the loan, even after it's repossessed, and ruin your credit for seven or ten years, or uh, <laughs> or just keep paying on it and just learn to love it again. I get them in here every week, guys. And usually the bigger the dealership they buy from, the more they owe on it. Big dealers don't become big dealers by giving people fair deals on used RV. The bigger the dealership, the more people pay for them by the time they pay that out the door price. I've seen dealers take a $20,000 advertised price and by the time the people that buy that $20,000 camper they advertise leave with it, uh, they uh, they wind up paying $32,000, $34,000 for it and financed it. I see it every day, guys. I had some folks... Um, and they tried to, and they, they just wanted to sell this unit to me. Had a grand design fifth wheel, which are very nice Winnebago built fifth wheels. And I, I'm always try to buy them when I can. MSRP back, it was a 19 model. MSRP was like $69,000 back then. Brand new. Bought it brand new. Had a couple of things had to be fixed on it. Asked them what they owed on it. And they were out west too. This wasn't anywhere local. This was out west. And because so I'd have to pay several hundred dollars to go get it. They still owed 67.5 on it. They were first time RV buyers when they bought it. 67.5, four years old. Literally, retail book was like 33, 34. That, and of course, I can't pay that for it because I have to say, you know, I, I pride myself on having lowest prices in the country. So when I buy something, I have to buy it to sell it several thousand under retail books, and I have to make a profit too. So, uh, you know, in that situation, they couldn't sell it. They, of course, they've been trying to sell it for six months. They couldn't sell it because they owed so much on it. And, uh, and they never guessed where they bought it from. Our good old buddies at Ripoff World. Man, they got them another victim. <laughs> but hey, that's the one dealer everybody has to hate. But there are other dealers not far behind them, guys. Remember, these corporate dealers, man, y'all are in for a ride and you buy from them. You think they're cheaper because they're bigger, but it's entirely, and they bank on that, these, these corporate dealers do, but it's exactly the opposite. Man, they just, And that's probably the worst one I've seen in a while. Wow. But hey, they had a low payment every month. That counts for something, right? <laughs> Heck, they only paid a few hundred dollars a month, and it really showed on their payoff. <laughs> you know, four years of payments, and they still only, and they still only, and they still owed fifteen hundred dollars less than what MSRP was new after four years. Wow, that was pretty bad. But anyway, of course, obviously, I was I didn't buy it. And there wasn't nothing I could do to help them, and I feel sorry for them. But you know, you know, people do it themselves. They get caught up in the moment. They don't think about. They think about payment instead of how much they're financing and how long they're financing it. Do your homework and just be smart about it. You know, I always stretch my payments out, of course, to keep my debt to income ratio down low. But I always pay. You know, double payment, triple payment to pay it off sooner. You know, I may finance an RV for 15 years, but I'll pay it off in five. And that's just because I buy credit, by debt to income ratio, I don't want it maxed out over something I use a few times a year. So, yeah, I'll, you know, as long as the interest rate's good, a simple interest loan, always stretch your payment out. But you've got to be disciplined to pay it 
to pay double and triple your payment every month to pay it off sooner. The sooner you pay it off, the less interest you pay total. In other words, you pay a 15-year note off in five years, you only pay five years worth of interest, not the whole 15. So anytime you finance an RV, make sure it's a simple interest loan. Anything else, don't do it. Anyway, guys, thank y'all so much for watching, and I hope I gave y'all some good information there. Um, I'm going to pause the video for a minute and put their awning up and close all the latches, and I'm going to get one of my salespeople to ride with us. We'll take this thing for a test drive. So hang tight, guys, and uh, always never don't please, please hit that subscribe button, smash the thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share on social media. Hang tight. I'll see you back here from the driver's seat. All right, everybody, now we're going to test drive this little Coachman Freelander 21 QB. Got my good buddy Shane, as always. Be my wingman, going to be our cameraman and going to uh, record everything. Show him some love and make sure you uh, give him a call or a text with any questions about this RV or interest. Shane, what's your number? It's 423-347-8478. All right, let's take her down the road. Great turning radius on this little motorhome, too. So you got the 60 Vortec V8, so tons of horsepower for a little motor home and torque. Should not be an issue. And that's really it much bigger to me than driving a van. Definitely a lot more interior space. Oh yeah. <laughs> Got on it yet, and this thing will get up and go. Transmission shifts good. nice about this versus the big one you don't have to floor it to get up to the get up to the speed of traffic like you do on the great big one so it's going to help your fuel mileage out a little bit and see if we pull that front of the ship <laughs> on a little bit here which I know this thing's probably gonna hit easily hit 65 probably more it sounds good oh I'm yeah I'm catching up the cars at 60 right there I'm about to back off <laughs> oh yeah huh. oh this thing got the power of a mid-size SUV getting on the interstate here. No issue there. Let's hit the cruise control. It's good. 65. Wind noise not bad at all for a Class C, even with that cab over, so. And the good thing about that cab over is we got a, we got a built-in sun visor. You don't even need these. Ride smooth. Tires feel good. Not out of balance or anything. It's about pulling to the left or the right. I do like the fact that I actually put a 4500. Express chassis on this instead of a 3500. So, wider wheelbase means less sway. Like this truck going up, coming up beside us, he's not he's not jerking us around the lane. Cause that wider, more stable wheelbase. 
we're gonna get off here, but check the brakes out. These little Chevrolet chassis, they just work so well in a smaller motor, in a smaller C-Class. Now, if this was like a, say, a 26-footer with a slide or two, I'd rather have the Ford, but just this little small one with no slide, lightweight, small wheelbase, these, these Chevrolets, I just, I just like them. I like the way they ride and drive better. Even though, don't get me wrong, the Ford's fine too, but, but I do prefer the Chevrolet. But anyway, guys, this thing drives great. It does have a loud turn signal, but they all do <laughs> guys if you like this unit give us a call or give shane a call text let's see if it's available shane what's your number 423-347-8478 and uh smash us a thumbs up come out and check it out yourself come test drive it for yourself you're going to be very surprised low miles very easy to maneuver um thanks again for watching hit that subscribe button and look forward to seeing you here in beautiful Ringo, Georgia.